myself shubhojit mukherji sbu head harmonica division of acumentis welcome you all doctors from india and from around the world doctor i take great pleasure in i mean we have already announced the first module and we did it successfully that we are doing a six module on endometriosis with the department of reproductive medicine and surgery of kasturba medical college today we have the module 2 the subject being deep infiltrating endometriosis difficulty in diagnosis and management the speaker is dr alberto of spain namaste from the house of acumes and acumentis the light within us boasts to the light within you dr i take great pleasure in introducing my parent company which is acumes drugs and pharmaceuticals limited acumes drugs doctors has 900 plus clients around the world let me tell you acumes is the country's number one contract research and manufacturing organization we call it cdmo so we manufacture for different companies we have 900 plus clients around the world we manufacture more than 12 percent of the country's drugs and consumption four dsir approved r and d facilities we have 4000 plus formulations to our credit 13000 product 830 plus out of which 395 are the first time in india and we have 535 plus which are food license product which we call fssi approvals and i'm very happy to tell you that the department of pharmaceuticals government of india conferred acumes drugs and pharmaceuticals with the india pharma leader award in 2018 and 19 and in both the years it was conferred by the honorable minister chemicals and fertilizers and uh, i have also great pleasure in announcing that acumes drugs and pharmaceuticals was also conferred with the indian pharma award 21 for excellence in contract research and manufacturing this was held recently in fact in delhi which was in the cphi event organized by informa markets where we got the number one award for excellent in contract research and manufacturing and i am happy to tell you that acumes features as the third in rank of the next fortune 500 companies among pharmaceutical sector in 2020 acumes recently featured in the next fortune 500 companies in the march 20 issue which i just talked about it in this picture we have standing is our mentor mr dc jain followed by mr sanjeev jain on the right and on the left mr sandeep jain both co-founders of acume structs and pharmaceuticals and this was also very recently uh, that got published in the india today anniversary issue in jan 21 where acumes recently featured as a eminent corporate of eminence and i now come to acumentis which is the sales and marketing wing of acumes and acumentis the vision of acumentis is to become a global healthcare company empowering each and every patient on earth with novel healthcare solution to fight the discomfort acumentis has nine strategic business units women's health cardio diabeto orthopedia derma and general my division is called harmonica a division serving women's health to gynae obstetrics and ivf the division is called harmonica as the name signifies brings back harmony to life doctor we have at our disposal product like fibroids which is low dose mifepristone managing medical management of fibroids we have dynofirst which is dynogest 2 mg for medical management of endometriosis then for medical management of pcos we have ushorem which is metformin myodicairo and for the ivf therapy we have endothec which is our estradiol valerate clomipure is our enclomifene citrate ofn plus and michel is our micronized progesterone now take the pleasure of introducing dr pratap kumar <laughs> who has been the brain behind this uh, entire program basically so dr pratap kumar is the head department of reproductive medicine and surgery kasturba medical college manipal academy of higher education the positions which he held 
national vice president of the Federation of Obstetrics and Gynecology in the year 1999, appointed on the editorial committee of several journals. Dr. Pratap is member of Task Force of Human Development and Disease Biology, Department of Biotechnology, New Delhi, member of the Project Review Group on Reproductive and Child Health, Indian Council of Medical Research, New Delhi. Dr. Pratap has more than 300 publications and presented more than 900 presentations in national and international congresses. And Dr. Pratap is editor of 10 textbooks and contributed to several chapters. So over to Dr. Pratap to carry on with the proceedings. Thank you very much, Subhajit, for the lovely introduction. And I'm very happy to share this, uh, all the modules with uh, all of you. And we had the first module on the 5th of May. And I was the speaker, Dr. Rishikesh Pai was the chairperson. I spoke about understanding pathophysiology of endometriosis. The present module will be by Dr. Alberto Vasquez from Spain. He'll be talking about difficulty in people pediatric endometriosis. The next month on the 7th, Sia Sharma from UK will talk about understanding pain in endometriosis. Chairperson will be Narendra Malhotra from Agra. The module four, and five and six also will be there. The four will be by Dr. Madhuri Patil from Bangalore, ovarian stimulation and of course is difficult in endometriosis. Module five will be Dr. Sonia Malik from New Delhi and Rishma Pai will chair. Module six will be Sevilla Raja, we call him Selva from Malaysia, who's a very good endoscopic surgeon. He'll talk about tackling surgery in endometriosis. So we have now our chairperson, Dr. Nandita Palshetkar, it's my proud uh, privilege to introduce Nandita. And uh, she's a lovely lady. I want to just tell that one sentence. She's one of these dynamic, lovely ladies from India. And she's heading several of these uh, uh, federations. And basically, she, I don't know how she runs seven centers all over India. And I think it's a difficult task. Medical Director of Bloom IVF. Uh, she was appointed in the PC Pendant Committee of 2021. Uterus Transplant Committee of 2021, ERT Bill, and of course, PC Pending Committee once again earlier than that was 2010, Member Surrogacy Bill 2016, Chair Steering Committee, Manyata Project 19, GOI Committee Midwifery Care in Childbirth 2019. She's a very popular speaker in several conferences, 65 orations and 900 talks, authored 100 chapters and edited 23 books. And I present to you Nandita, because her CV was huge and we had to pick up some important statements and I thought uh, there are many more to talk about Nandita and so glad Nandita today here. I hand over you to the whole program and then please introduce our speaker. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Pratap. I think uh, you've been such a great friend over the years and whenever Pratap actually you deliver a talk, I am listening to you. And I think in all our conferences, all the workshops that we arrange, we cannot function without you. So I think you've got somebody who is really an academician who is conducting these modules. And I spoke to Mr. Subhajit and he said so many student people have logged in. I think whatever Pratap you touch, you yeah. it's always successful. It's a golden touch. So today I'm really, really happy to be here and uh, to introduce... Professor Alberto Vasque. Uh, we were actually asking him how to pronounce his name. So he said it's very, very Spanish. Uh, you know, I wanted to say a few things about him. When we were talking with him, he loves his reproductive surgery. I think he's got a passion, which is, uh, you could make out when he was talking about it. He's uh, gone and done the fellowship in endometriosis with Dr. Anand Vate. And what I read was he helped in the development of surgical videos and educational programs for endoscopic surgery. And I think that's really uh, an amazing thing, right? At present, he is in um, IEV, uh, Roma, Valencia. And uh, he was a professor in um, reproductive surgery uh, in the University Hospital of Barcelona. And uh, one thing that I really was amazed to read that you have an MBA degree, Master's in Business Administration. Uh, that is uh, really something out of the box, and it just tells us what a multi, uh, you know talented personality you are. 
Of course, he's given a lot of lectures, uh, authored many, um, you know, chapters on reproductive surgery, and is the reviewer of many international uh, medical journals. And today, uh, Dr. Alberto, we are really looking forward to discussing this topic, deep infiltrating endometriosis. I think it's a very difficult topic, and uh, we really want you to make it very simple for us so that we can diagnose and manage our patients. So we're really looking forward to listening to you. The stage is all yours. Mm. Thank you, Nandita and Pratap, uh, for this um, really kind invitation. Um, very nice words about me, and uh, I really appreciate that. You know, um, well, I can tell you that I'm uh, proud because I did a... Uh, a fellowship in uh, in France with Batiès, uh, doing only endometriosis surgery, and I think I learned something that I, I would like really to share with us uh, with you today. So I will, uh, if you agree, I will share my screen and I will start with the presentation. Okay? Yeah. Yes. We're looking forward to it. Okay. Let's go. Well, I will start. I will start with a little um, introduction about uh, fertility, and then I will be focused on uh, endometriosis uh, surgery. Uh, I don't have any conflict uh, of interest to declare. I will start, as I say, with uh, fertility. Then I will focus the talk uh, on surgery. That is the main part. Uh, as you know, uh, endometriosis has an impact on fertility. The prevalence in uh, fertile women could be as high as fifty percent. You know the two two main symptoms that uh, affect the quality of life that are uh, pain and infertility, but endometriosis also affects the social life, the sexuality, mental health, and the relationships with partners that can indirectly affect uh, women's fertility. It's also associated with uh, poor quality of sites, which can affect uh, folliculogenesis and embryogenesis, and um, resulting in uh, reduced uh, fertilization and pregnancy rates, as you know. About the surgery, the laparoscopic surgery for endometriosis increased the rates of uh, spontaneous pregnancy compared to diagnostic laparoscopy alone. But endometriosis surgery is not recommended prior to IVF to improve a uh, life birth rate. However, since endometriosis surgery appears to be effective in a given spontaneous pregnancy, it may be assumed that it would also be effective in improving reproductive outcomes, but before IVF, of course, but uh, uh, there is no evidence uh, to support uh, this statement. About endometrioma, only little words because uh, I will speak mainly about deep endo. The surgical treatment of endometrioma before IVF not impact only uh, on life birth rate compared to doing nothing. You know, the surgery negative effect on the variant reserve. So endometrioma surgery is not indicated by your IVF when the sole purpose is to improve the IVF outcomes, but surgery may be recommended to facilitate the access to the ovaries or to alleviate the pain related with uh, endometriosis. The indications for deep endometriosis. Well, there is a subject of a uh, big debate. Mm. You know, the indication in infertile patients depends more on the intensity of pain or on the patient's priorities than in the fertility, infertility itself. If the patient uh, has as priority, priority the quality of life over desire of pregnancy, the surgery is well indicated. So to summarize, before going deep in the technique and strategy, in patients with infertility but not pain, IVF is a good option. Pain without infertility surgery is the best option, but both you must speak with patient and the patient will decide. Well, in women with endometriosis, I think they should be uh, counseled individually because there are many factors to take into account, such the pain and other symptoms, age of patient, location of lesions, previous treatments as IVF, art, or different art techniques or surgery, and of course the complications of surgery and pregnancy if endometriosis is present. 
In this scenario, the management by a multidisciplinary team specializing in endometriosis is a key factor to give a good outcome. This is the first and probably the most important message of this talk. You must work in team to have a good outcome. Well, about the strategy. It should start always by the physical examination and discussion with the patient. And then we move on to the surgical technique and strategy. Symptoms. I think, you know, for sure, we can divide the non-organ in two groups. Non-organ specific symptoms like dysmenorrhea or chronic pelvic pain. But there are some symptoms that are related to uh, some organs that can be affected by endometriosis. So if the vagina is affected, dyspareunia is a typical symptom. If the bowel is affected, dyskesia and the bladder patients probably complained about the dysuria. What I, well, uh, why I'm saying back to the basis about the medical history and the physical examination? Well, I explained to you my point of view. Probably is particular, but it's my experience here in Spain and also in Europe. When you are um, doing reproductive medicine, you are with physicians that usually they are not doing surgery. And I see many of them, I can say most of them doing that. You are in the consultation, you receive the patient, the patient explains to you a big history about the infertility. Usually it's huge, a lot of problems. You discuss with the patient, you speak with the patient, and then immediately what is the thing that they do after speaking is an uh, ultrasound. Well, I think ultrasound is okay, it's a good option. I can tell you for the diagnosis, but don't forget to do to put the speculum, to do a vaginal touch and to see everything. Because especially in this uh, pathology, pathology, the physical examination is mandatory. So, you know, you can see these typical bluish nodules in the vagina. If you see a patient with that, I'm really sure the patient will complain about dyspareunia, about pain. And if you touch these nodules with your fingers, the patient probably will feel pain. So you have a solution that is uh, the resection of these nodules. And then with that, you can improve the symptoms and the quality of life of the patient. So once you have the diagnosis and you indicate a surgery, you must discuss a lot about that with the patient. Is you that has the power to, you know, I, how can I say? Yes, the power of uh, uh, guide the patient to what to do. But you must be nice, of course. You must be uh, delicate. You must explain everything. The complications is a, an important factor in this difficult surgery because if something happened that is not expected or not explained before, you can have some problems after. So explain as much as you can. About the technique, endometriosis surgery is very complex and carries high risk of complications. This is mainly due to the involvement of different organs that can be affected by the pathology, like bowel, bladder, ureters, whatever, and mainly because the anatomy is distorted. You know, I put these two images. Now we have in times of war here in Europe, as you know, with Ukraine. But this is Berlin on the right in the Second World War and in the left nowadays. You know, for me, the endometriosis surgery is like, like the photo on the right. It's, it's like that. You know, it's really difficult with high, high risk of complications. So what do you need? A high degree of precision, precision during the surgery and a surgical and a good skilled surgeon and team, of course. Why well, I put this this uh, photo? Okay. The, the experience of the surgeon and the skills are important, the fundamental for a good surgeon. But think that, in my humble opinion, the surgeon, big surgeons, we can say, they have a, we can say a big, um, 
Well, a big, uh, how can I say that? Um, something that can be against them. That is his ego. You know, you think you are doing perfect and then it's when you make mistakes. Sometimes it's because you think you're alone and it's not. It's better to work in team. Remember always that, especially in this pathology, if you have a bowel involvement, it's good to work with a bowel surgeon. You have ureteral, you can have an urologist, a good nurse to guide you, a good assistant that can, that can help you. It's important in this kind of surgery. And of course, it's very important to train hard before facing these cases, okay? And convinced that shared knowledge is uh, crucial for all of us. If we want to learn, we must share what we know. If not, it's not a good way to progress. Look this example that someone asked the CEO in an enterprise, what happens if we invest in training and then they leave us? And why is the CEO answers, what happens if we don't and they stay? So it's always better to teach people. Let's go in the, in the surgical part, okay? This is a typical frozen pelvis you face when you have a patient with deep endometriosis. You have the, you see the bowel, you see the tubes, you see the uterus. What happened? What, what we should do? Okay, I'm convinced we should perform this surgery always by laparoscopy, always. In no, no, no case to do the surgery by laparotomy. Perhaps we think that the advantages of laparoscopy are the quality of life, to have less pain for the patient, shorter hospitalization, faster recovery. We, we can think that is that. But, you know, you can, let's see, we speak about uh, hysterectomy, that is easy to understand. If you compare, laparoscopic hysterectomy with um, abdominal hysterectomy, this is true. But if you compare laparoscopic hysterectomy with vaginal hysterectomy, this is not true, okay? I will put this, this video I like, okay. You know, it's about football, but look, look, I will try to explain the message with this video. Well, this is a, uh, okay, we call football in English says uh, soccer. This is Maradona. I hope you know who is he. He's a great player. He's, he's died now. He played in Argentina and now he's, the moment he's warming, when he was playing in Naples in Italy and, you know, look what he's doing. He's warming the knees, you see the shoulders before, uh, the feet, of course, the head, and look the others, look this guy walking, the others look, what are they doing? They are running, and Maradona is warming. I think he's having fun, and the body's even not touching the floor. So, what is the message? He understood that football is controlling the ball, not running after the ball. So, if we want, if we want, to understand the advantages of laparoscopy is not what we've seen before. It's not uh, quality of life, shorter hospitalization. This is not true. This could be consequences, but the advantages are these three. With endoscopy, not only laparoscopy, we can magnify the image, we can sell it and shape the information, and we can keep constant the distance between eye, instrument, and tissue. This is not possible with vaginal or abdominal surgery. And speaking about endometriosis, surgery, this is very important. Why? Because this is our advantage, this is our vision. And better quality of vision, the decision we can make are better, the precision we have is better, probably the outcome is better. No data, no studies, but this is the philosophy and probably is is true. If you are precise, 
it can have a good result. So this is the power for me of endoscopy. This is what I learned when I was with Arnova TS, that is probably the greatest surgeon doing endometriosis or even endoscopy I've ever seen. I, I, have, I can tell you I've seen many. This is him doing surgery. Look, why I'm telling, okay, how to explain that? You see, this is very classical. It's scissor, right hand, bipolar, left. What is for me important? Well, it's not only the, the theoretical knowledge, it's the movement of the hands and it's using both hands the whole time without doing something. Without, no, with or doing something. If you move, look the movements. What is the key? Dissect as much as you can, especially in endometriosis, we will see after. Coagulate before cutting, for sure and know the anatomy. If you know the anatomy, if you don't know the anatomy, don't do surgery because in the endometriosis is distorted and we must restore it. You know, you have this vision and you can go with the camera wherever you want, keeping the const constants, the distance between the eye, instrument and tissue. Some rules before the strategy. In endometriosis surgery, it's better to do nothing than doing something wrong. The first surgery is always, and in medicine it's not good to say always, but I can tell you in this case, is always the most important surgery. If you do a first surgery of endometriosis not well done, the one that is coming after will have many problems. Of course, the patient. The surgery must be as complete as possible, resection of all visible lesions, and be radical with the disease, but, disease, but conservative, with the function. So we must balance what to do. We can divide the strategy in general and specific. We start with the general, we ins with inspection of the cavity, we release the additions to restore the anatomy, we can expose the ovaries, dissect the ureter and the parietal force and then revaluate with a touch. Why I put this follow the white line and the fat is the friend? Look. You know, we have, okay, we must prepare the field to do the surgery. And we have this physiological and not always physiological additions of the sigma in the left parietal wall. So start the surgery doing the things properly. So don't go into the retroperitoneal space. It's not necessary, even you have here a mistake, as you can see a hole. And cutting the fat, you see, is our friend, and follow the line. You see this white line and then you must be under the line to follow the right plane as you can see here, okay? Separate, restore the anatomy. It's important. You can suspend the ovaries. Why? Well, this is a video. This is when I was in IRCAT with, uh, with Arnaud. He developed this uh, T-lift I show you here. You, you can do it easily also with a uh, straight needle. What is the idea? You have the ovaries that can disturb, this is an easy ovary, but sometimes they are big and they can disturb you the field. And the assistant is taking the ovary. This is a mis big mistake because the assistant must help you. Not taking the ovary, doing other things. So you can suspend the ovary and you free the assistant. It's important to have a good assistant, a good surgeon with you doing this kind of surgery. Then we have the ovaries. In the abdomen, you have the bowel with additions move back, and then you must start to see where is the ureter. Because the risk of making an injury in the ureter in this kind of surgery is high, it's better to see where it is. Where is the ureter? It's always medial to the AP ligament. It's always there. You can have some variations, but not in the lateral part. It's always there. Usually, as you can see in this one, on the left part, the ureter is crossing the common iliac artery. On the right, as you will see after, is crossing the external, uh, external right external iliac, as you can see in this uh, picture. Okay, you see here on your left. Look, you see common ureter, but always medial to the IT ligament. Right, common iliac, 
left and right is crossing here the ureter follow always lateral to the uterosacral medially to the IP ligament this is important to know I know you know but I want you to remember and then they said the fossa the parabrachial fossa well always you follow try to follow the good plane you have the peritoneal aspect on the left you start to develop follow the fat follow bubbles because of the gas this is a good benefit you see the bubbles there it's a good benefit and these are the vascular spaces you can develop once you develop the parabrachial fossa you see the bowel here on your right here the fossa then you go inside also on the right part and then you have the problem when the bowel is affected or a rectovaginal nodule and then you can face this problem you can do a vaginal touch to be sure where is the lesion okay once you did that you start the specific strategy let's start with the ureter mainly it's a strinsic disease main effect the third distal part of the ureter left side strong association with retrovaginal endometriosis ureters displaced to the midline they are not where we expect they are especially near the ureterosacral ligaments ureterolysis with treatment in most cases but if you have some internal or intrinsic disease or you can see a dilatation of ureter you can do something sometimes you must reset you can do a terminal anastomosis is favor is our favorite i think urologists prefer to reimplant ureterolysis look how it is you will see people that learn with our we are doing all the time this way <laughs> with the bipolar and and scissors you start near lateral of excuse, excuse me medial to the ip ligament and then you develop you must leave lateral the ureter okay to put the ureter far from the disease you see here the the problem is there you see here the bowel you can separate then you can develop at this time the pararectal fossa and then you can reset the lesions safely without harming ureter this is another video from Arno. I can share them because he allows me, of course, but this was made when I was with him in a life surgery. And well, the ureter was affected. So, what is the solution? The solution is to cut. Of course, if we're going to cut the ureter, we must put on. Sorry, we must put on. A double G. So we cut and then we stitch the technique with the ureter. Usually four stitches, 12, 9, 3, and 6 o'clock. Usually is that. Four zero monofilament is preferred monofilament than plurifilament. And what we do. We leave the, uh, the double G six, eight weeks. It's the same if we make the reimplantation and put the video, or this is a very old one. Or um, if we reimplant, double G is the same and the catheter one week usually is enough. Well, if we're going to reimplant, we must fix the bladder to the psoas, as you can see. To have some stability, then we open the bladder, you see. And then we fix this part of the bladder to the ureter, and then we, we stitch and do probably three stitches is enough. And we leave the ureter in the bladder. I really prefer the anastomosis, but this is an option. I did I never did this technique, I can tell you with the reimplantation i see it by an urologist but i did it myself i never did myself well bladder complete extinction of the lesion is associated with the resolution of symptoms and low rate of disease recurrence 
the role of distoscopy is, is important. For the diagnosis of uh, endometriosis, this is my favorite technique. We can have different, but magnetic resonance, you have a whole picture. And I think, you know, you have the pictures. I always like to see myself before, look at what the radiologist is written. I prefer to see what I uh, what is in the pictures and look at them carefully to find endometriosis like here in the bladder, okay? With that, you can plan surgery. You can perform a cystoscopy. You know, if you are not used to do it, don't be scared. It's like an hysteroscopy. You put the hysteroscope inside the bladder and you can check where is the nodule as in this case. Indications to put the double G when you are doing bladder, and bladder endo. If the nodule is near the ostium or near the trigon, it's better to put the catheter, it's better to stand. If you have ureteral endometriosis associated with bladder, stand also. What can we do? We can shave, we can do a mucosal skinning or a partial cystectomy. The shaving, you know, but this, this case I think is interesting. You have this, um, this is the mucosa of the bladder. You reset the nodule already and then you have this, uh, this mucosa here. You know, the risk of perforation is high, but sometimes you are lucky and you don't need to go inside bladder. The, the dilemma, is to stitch or not to stitch in these cases? Well, I really think it's better to stitch. But no studies about that. The common sense is telling me, look, you have this. Even if you put the catheter, probably the risk of leakage after is higher. So cover it with the muscularis. Three, zero monofilament is a good option. If you are doing that, I didn't tell you, in the ureter, also probably in bladder, it's better to do intracorporeal knotting. Because uh, the tension you get doing the technique is, uh, not for the tension, but when you are doing extracorporeal knotting, sometimes uh, you can, I don't know, the risk of breaking the, or making something wrong is higher from my point of view. For sure for the ureter, for the, if you are doing external uh, knotting for the ureter, you don't have, you cannot oppose the um, ureter properly, you, can, you will do that. This is wrong, do, in, do intracorporeal, okay? Because the type of knotting, this you cannot do it by extracorporeal knotting. And finally, you know, for the bladder is very similar than for the bowel, but we can say the risk of complications are lower. You go on the lateral parts, you dissect. Well, this is okay for sure. You can have a different opinion. This is what I think is the best way, is what I learned. So is what I explain. Eh? Probably you come to me and tell me there are different ways to do it and that are better. Eh, could be an option for sure. But if you go lateral, you dissect and then you face directly the problem, you know. It's good to have also a bipolar on your left hand because if you have some bleeding, you can coagulate. Right? At some point, you will open the bladder. This is the case with the, uh, the previous cystoscope you see, this is the same case. You see there is the stem put inside. Then you cut. When you finish, yes, you see the catheter, you see the stents, and then you, you do the stitch. One layer, two layers, nothing is written about as you wish. In my opinion, I think one layer is enough. But as you wish, you can do one layer, you can do two layers. 
You can do, I think, internal noting probably is better, but you can do external in the bladder, not in the ureter. And that's all. I'm finishing the talk about bowel to end. No evidence to show which technique is better than other. Surgery, if you schedule the surgery with a bowel surgeon, I think should be like that. The resection rate is higher because they like to cut, as you know. We recommend the resection when you have multiple lesions, stenosis, more than 50% or mucosal involvement. Rectum effect, shaving is preferred or discoid resection if you need to resect. Lesions in the sigma, you can do a terminal, a cementary resection and terminal with lower rate of complications. Shaving. I think it's nice to do it with the, with the scissors. This is another video from Marno. Well, you can do it, mm, how can I say, with the uh, other instrument like uh, Liga Shure, uh, I don't know, others, you know, whatever you want to do, Thunder Video, I don't know, and the seal. But if you cut, whole cut, and you coagulate not too much, I think it's a good way to see which tissue is affected from the disease and which, which, and which tissue is free from the disease. And that's this guy you weigh um, good to have a good uh, result. This coid, this coid is section, also, this is a video from uh, IRCAT. I think this is nice to see. And it, this is a good option when you have a lesion in the rectal sigmoid, only one, not multiple, not mucosa effect. Or even, we can say mucosa, but an only lesion, not multiple. Because you put the lesion inside, you open this machine, the reticulator machine, as you can see here, but first you do the stitch and then you put the lesion inside and then you activate the machine, as you will see. I like this technique, really, because the result is good and the rate of complication is much lower than using the traditional sedimentary resection and terminal, terminal anastomosis. But you must have the good indication. For sedimentary resection, look, I won't go deep on that because you have many techniques. It's better, you it's better if you have a bowel surgeon with you to do that. You can do it uh, vaginally through the anus. You can do opening. In this case, a little, little incision. You can do it the way you feel, make you feel safer. To end, always look. How can I say to you that? You can do the things perfect or thinking you did good. But if you don't do this kind of test and you have a complication, if you go, if you go to the court, you will have problems and serious ones. But if you do these tests and they are right, you can be covered. This is my opinion. So, and they are very easy to perform, okay? In bladder, you can have, you know, if you have this leakage, as you can see here, and you don't realize you have this, and you have a fistula, imagine a bladder, a basic vaginal fistula, well, can be a big problem for the patient. But if you do the test, you realize you have this leakage and you do a stitch as you are seeing here, probably you don't have the complication and you are safe. Good to do it. For bowel, this is, this is me in this case doing that. So look. We go inside, we put water, and then we put gas inside the bowel. Here is negative, you don't see bubbles. Here is another case. 
you can see this can this is from a bowel uh, surgeon that uh, he gave to me and you see look the bubbles here this is a leak this is not look oh sorry this is not i'm finishing as you see we go you can see about a, a bubble look like you see but this is not a problem it's a small bubbles and this is also another case you do the same but with methylene blue and look what a beautiful image here you see the mucosa the same no studies to tell you what to do i think it's better to stitch and cover this mucosa here with a stitch i think the risk of complication is going to be lower so this is the meshes work with precision working team for sure especially in different situations like endo or deep endometriosis thank you very much for your attention and i come back to you if you have any questions yes. i hope you enjoy i don't know let me know what do you think Excellent talk. I would request Dr. Nandita to say a few words before I ask the questions to you. I think it was fabulous. All your videos really with so much skill. And also, I think what you really uh, taught everybody is the vision is very important. It will mm. give you precision. And that's what came across in your surgical mm. uh, videos. I think mm. it was really an eye opener. You made it look very easy, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, no, no. I know. I no, know. no, no. You know, it's only video, but well, yeah. you know, it's difficult. I'm sure, it requires lots and lots of hours of you know surgery training, but yeah. amazing talk, and I think uh, you very simplified it a lot, and uh, I'm sure our audience has benefited. Yeah, Dr. Pratap Kumar, you have some questions, I think. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Eric Alberto, because uh, as Dr. Nandita mentioned. A great skill you have and then uh, your videos are excellent and uh, as you said that you know uh, I would like to just kind of summarize what you said because you definitely said if there is no pain there is no need to do surgery you directly do assisted reproductive technology mm -hmm. you did mention that if somebody has severe pain you need to have a surgery done and if both infer uh, of course infertility and pain then you leave it to the patient I think that's I like that because our patients don't decide here anyway. So we have to take a decision ourselves. And uh, Nandita, we agree with that because I think uh, you know, leave it to my patient. They'll say cure or cure my pain first. That's what they say. So yeah, uh, I also like the approach of multidisciplinary team. I think we need to have a good friend in colorectal surgeon uh, for the deep endometriosis. And I think from tomorrow, I'm going to hunt for my friend. Who's, become a, who's going to be a colorectal surgeon expert and I would invite him from to my operating center. And I think you did mention about this uh, non-organic and organic specific symptoms. And I like that because uh, we know that uh, dysmenorrhea and chronic pain is non-organic as you said, and uh, this peronian dyskesia is organic specific. I think that's a nice statement. And you also mentioned about ultrasound how important it is to precisely see where the nodules are. And uh, there's a very interesting question by the audience. The first question by the audience is, how do you prepare the bubble for resection of endometriosis uh, in the rectovaginal space? Bubble preparation. Well, um, I tell you, what we do is uh, only, uh, I think, well, the protocol we have is five days of an, a specific diet, low proteins diet. Um, um, well, is 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 well described, and then the night before enema, and the morning before surgery, we repeat the another uh, enema, and with that we think is enough to prepare bowel. A low low residue diet, we can say specifically. Okay, that's excellent because there's a very practical question and uh, there's another interesting question about, uh, you know, you did a tell about balancing in surgery. 
and uh, you also showed about urethric dissection. The you also showed about dissection of pararectal fossa. The question by the audience is: uh, You did show about ureter and the uh, vessel. Uh, can you be more specific about ureteric dissection? How much do you dissect? What is the question? Well, how look, much, uh, when you say you do, you stop it. You know how do you say that? Well, uh, I think usually, okay, usually in my in my opinion, you start in the pelvic in the pelvic brim that is very when very near to the infundibulo pelvic ligament medial to that you start the dissection and you follow the ureter to the ureteric canal usually with that is enough you see when you when it's passing through the uh, ureterosacral on the lateral part start the canal and then i think you can stop at this level dissection oh. i think it's enough it's not dissection like in a cancer you they said towards the bladder i don't think it's necessary in most of the cases in endometriosis yeah correct mm. uh, yeah this I think some... okay right right um there are many more questions but interesting part is that uh you did show about this uh ovary being suspended to the abdominal wall and you call it a steel lift what do you what do you mean by steel lift that's what one of the Speak. Uh, one of the audience asking. Tea leaf. The tea leaf. The tea leaf is this um, this tool uh, I show in the video. You know, it's called like that because the the um, you know um, the tool that uh, suspend the ovary is like a tea. You pass, and then it's like the labels you have in the in the clothes. You pass, go through the ovary, and then you can suspend. This is a way, but you can do it with a straight needle passing through the ovary towards the abdominal wall is cheaper and you can do it this way. You know, I think it's very important to have a, a good surgeon helping you during the surgery and this maneuver to put the ovaries in the abdominal wall free the system and can make the things easier to you. Yeah, that's true, but uh, I think the, the audience want to ask about you, you did mention about how to put it and put, pull the ovary back. Do you think that ovarian ligament may tear when you do that? No. You go through the ovary. I have yeah, to be... The, yeah, the audience are asking me in the yeah. question, when you put the ovary up like that, yeah. do you think that uh, ovarian artery might tear? No. Well, no, I don't, in my experience, never happened. I don't think it's a problem. No. Oh, that's interesting, yeah. There's one interesting question uh, by the audience. Uh, a lot of people have asked, like uh, Dr. Uh, Kotian Suhas, Bharti Mure, Nandini, Nandini Chakravarti from Calcutta. The previous people are from Mumbai. It's from, from Pratyusha from ODP. Can you explain a little more about how to test for bubble? Bubble, if you have a tear on the bubble, or you want to suspect, if you suspect a tear, how do you really uh, test on that? The bubble? Yes. Okay. You need a, a bowel manipulator. You have a different in the market, but you need one. And through this manipulator, you can put the methyl in blue or whatever you want to, to put, and you can put air, gas. So in the laparoscopic part, with the, with the forceps, it's good to have a one not aggressive for sure to close in the cranial part of the bowel to close the lumen of the bowel you need yours and the assistant you clamp you fill with water and then you put the gas through the through the anus a small bubbles means leak nothing or a big bubble means nothing okay means right. means you are okay yeah okay there's another question by Gaurav from uh, his, his question is Do you advise surgery in bilateral severe endometriosis before embryo transfer in FET cycle, frozen embryo transfer cycle? He Can wants to know it? before you transfer the embryos, do yeah. you remove the cyst? If there are bilateral ovarian cyst, do you no. have to remove that before embryo transfer? No, you don't need to do that. Okay, yeah. look. No, I don't think I don't think you need to do it. The, the only indication for me to, to treat, uh, uh, even many people is treating uh, endometriomas, uh, by surgically uh, speaking, I, I think, and not even, okay, in my experience, okay, 
I not even, you know, th this uh, this statement. You know, when you have the ovary and you have the fist and you have the follicles that are back from the fist, you can go with the needle in the in the 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 aspiration needle of a pickup. You can go without without aspiration. You can go through the endometrioma and aspirate. Start the aspiration when you are in the follicles back to the endometrioma. This is safe. I, do, I don't think this is a problem. So, yeah, I, I think so. See. Nandita, yeah, I agree. I agree. Nandita also would probably give her opinion about who side pick up in severe endometriosis. Do you think it's difficult, Nandita? Uh, I think uh, the ovaries are fixed. So, you know, sometimes you have to go even through the uterus because the uterus is retroverted. Yeah. Yeah. So, all That's these problems true. do occur. And if we uh, go into the endometrioma, what we do as a rule is we. Uh, try and keep that egg separate, you know, keep that, uh, even change the needle. But I don't know in the overall, I don't think it makes any difference. Yeah, but I think I, alternative, yeah, alternative stress is something there in endometriotic yeah. tissue. You are changing the needle also, you said. Yeah, go on, Amit, I, I want to ask. Anything. Yeah, I wanted to ask one question. Do you uh, advise aspiration of the endometrioma? Because right now there are a few articles saying that, you know, instead of doing uh, surgery on recurrent endometriosis, if the endometrioma is really large, you can actually aspirate it and do chemical cauterization. Do you recommend it? There are a few people in India who are doing it with laparoscopic surgery. I, Those who you, don't have lasers. I don't have experience in aspirating endometriomas. I, no. I don't have experience. It's an option. Also, there is the the, the school in, in Italy uh, with the alcoholization could be also an option, but I don't have experience. Okay. I, don't, I cannot tell you. Mm -mm. Yeah, I, think so. I, I want I, to ask one more question. That, yeah. uh, do you give medical therapy before FET? No. You just uh, do the aspiration, freeze the embryos and then transfer them in the next cycle? Yes. No GNRH analog, no progesterones, nothing. Usually, okay, you know there is very controversy about that. There is some uh, in the in the ESRE uh, recommendations 2022. The indication is there is no uh, no indication to giving treatment before. It's not indication, so I follow that. Okay. In in okay. the last ESRE in the last ESRE endometriosis. Um, um, the management, they they recommend the the analogs, yes. yeah, one month, but now it's not recommend. So, do you yeah. use medical therapy before uh, stimulation? Before stimulation, stimulation. Suppose oh, really? you're not doing surgery, would you use medical therapy? Sorry, uh, Pratap. <laughs> <laughs> <No. laughs> we can use contraception, contraceptive, contracep uh, contraception, yeah. We, we okay. can... All right. Yeah, go ahead, Pratap. <laughs> yeah, there's one more question by Dr. Gazil Jain uh, from Java Nagar Colony and Varanasi. How to manage large fibroid with previous history of myomectomy and endometriosis with infertility? That means there's a history of myomectomy before, and there's another myoma now, but she also has severe endometriosis. How do you I tackle <laughs> I tell you, I had a case last week. Exactly that. A patient with two big fibroids, okay, big, no, I don't know, six centimeters, seven, and deep endometriosis. Well, you know, seven hours surgery. For me, it was wow. long. Oh my God. And well, <laughs> how, to how to manage, in my opinion? These are re really hard because you have the pathology of the fibroid that is disturbing fertility because they were intramural in this case, and you have endometriosis. Well, the idea, uh, restore the anatomy. So if you have the bowel attached, you must uh, make the rectovaginal space. You have the bladder, like it was the case, you have the bladder all covering the uterus, you must dissect, and then you do the myomectomy. Well, it's long time to do, but is what is indicated, I think, is what you should do. Yeah, I think so. Thank you so much. Now, there's a couple of more questions before we end. There's a very interesting question by the audience. They are asking, you mentioned about discoid dissection of the ectosigmoid. Yeah. You also mentioned only lesion, remove, remove the lesion and 
you you showed some uh, kind of a machine and they want to watch that machine the machine is a roticulator it's called roticulator sorry what is that Rot what? roticulator spell uh, it spell it R O T E C U L A T O R. Roticulator. Roticulator. Yeah. This is a machine. Yeah, roticulator is something interesting because our audience mm -hmm. got excited by the that machine. <laughs> I was also wondering what it is because yeah. I have decided to make a friend of colorectal cells in somehow now in Manipal and in <laughs> India. I think uh, it's so important to have somebody like that. Because resection, you also mentioned about resection segmentary. You mentioned yeah. about anvil's ascent and uh, you know uh, rectal oh. transaction, etc. That is wow. very interesting. Um, oh. So a little that was the last question by the audience. You want to repeat that again? Anvil's ascent. What is anvil's ascent? <laughs> oh my God! This uh, <laughs> very interesting. This I should put the videos to understand because it's not. No, no, we, no, we don't put the videos. You just have to tell. I think. Uh, what is the last question? The last question seemed the most difficult question. So look, can... okay. When you are doing the terminal, you put you have the two parts, you cut and you have two parts. One, when you have this thing that is called anvil, you are going to fix with your is like the male and the female, and you are going to fix. So the anvil, you can put it two ways. You can put through the anus, you leave it there. But you must put a um, how can I say a thread in the part and you put it inside very gently because this is not an easy technique. And you can put another through the vagina. Imagine you have a rectal vaginal endometriosis, you open the vagina, that happens. You can go through the vagina and put inside the bowel, you leave it, and then you expose the anvil. It's called fishing because you must do it. It's a little uh, complicated to explain. You take yes, you fix okay. it like you are fishing. You take it, you put it outside, and then you go through the anus with your with the other machine to too much. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I think I it's interesting. We should have uh, another session of difficult surgery sometimes. Yes, uh, yes, yes, along yes. with some colorectal surgeon. You know, I like the way you presented. They started the whole thing very well, and then you said. Do not have ego. I think you you are a very humble person. And I can make out that. And mm -hmm. I think humility and uh, being humble is absolutely important. And yes. uh, though you are a fantastic surgeon, you are very humble. And you, I like that slide on the CEO statement. You know, if you don't yes. train people, they are anyway remaining bad anyway. This and I like it. Excellent. Really no, you don't. have you have that humane approach in this talk, and I really love that. So. Nandita, you have the last word to say. And <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> I think, uh, I think uh, you know, he is uh, so skilled. He's using his surgical skill and his MBA skills and gave a fabulous talk. I think uh, <laughs> you know, that insight which it gives him, having, uh, you know, done both the things, I think is uh, phenomenal. And uh, looking at you, I think we should tell everybody they must do an MBA. <laughs> Uh, no, but uh, I mean, jokes yeah. apart, uh, I think it was a fantastic talk. You made it look really simple. And uh, uh, what really the take home points, which Professor Pr Pratap Kumar actually said, was I think multidisciplinary action, uh, multidisciplinary team is very, very important. Mm -hmm. And uh, that really is something very important. And we have to understand it's a specialist surgery. You know, endometriosis is a specialization. And uh, yeah, and people around should think about it because fertility depends on it. There's so mm -hmm. many young girls who come with absolutely mm -hmm. zero reserve. And yeah, yeah. that is something very important. Maybe, you know, we can give the message that do an AMH before the surgery because it really guides you what to do, whether you can do fertility preservation before going in for surgery. That also yeah. could be something really worth doing in these patients. So thank, thank you, you very much. I think, Alberto, it was fabulous. And Dr. Yeah. Pratap, thank you for inviting me here. I really thank enjoyed this. Uh, Alberto, Nandita is the president of Indian Society of Assisted Reproduction. And I'm sure she'll have a lot of interaction with you. And, uh, you know, she's a very dynamic lady. So whatever she says happens. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, right. Alberto and You're Nandita. I would request uh, Subhajit to come on to the stage yeah. and uh, we'll probably end up in the show, yeah.
And thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Alberto, Dr. Pratap Kumar and Dr. Nandita. It was a great show, absolutely. And I was seeing there were great logins and, and there are still more questions coming, which probably will answer by mail uh, sometime later. But nonetheless, great talk. Thank you very much. And we'll see you all uh, in the third module, basically. Thank you very much. Thank you.